All right, I was asked to uh, talk about the, uh, the mods that I've done to my car. Uh, there are a few cosmetic mods, but mostly this is uh, meant to uh, be uh, more reliable and better on racetrack and autocross. So I'm going to start in the rear and then move through the uh, inside of the car and then through the front. So in the back, starting from the top, I have this carbon fiber spoiler, which was just installed on a fluke. Someone was selling one for a pretty good price, so I just installed it like the look. Doesn't really do much. Um, black badge, this is not a competition, but the old one started peeling and I got rid of all the chrome everywhere else, so I just went in the black one. Um, going back down, a towing strap for the track. Um, I think the only, only one is required, there is one in the front, but I put one in the back. So uh, the flap is actually, I cut the hole in it, uh, had it painted silver, and put it back on. Um, then a local company was making uh, exhaust um, tips, so they used my car to uh, try them on, take some pictures, so I just kept them on. This is still the other stock exhaust. So there's um, nothing special going on there, really. And so that about covers the other uh, back of the other uh, truck uh, trunk. Uh, I do have a lip that, that's PPF over here, just to protect the other bumper a little bit. Uh, there's some PPF here on the sides. And so it's just a little protection from the other rock chips. I do have the other mud, mud flaps from Tamiel garage. Uh, the front one I actually cut myself because I'm a lot wider than everybody else, so uh, they're pretty big. They're about an inch wider than Tommy's, but we'll get to that later. Uh, so the interesting stuff starts here. I am on uh, JRZ RS1 uh, dampers and hypercoil springs. So this is the other damper here. The car is fresh after an event, so I actually have the wheel off to uh, check, make sure there are no leaks, that everything is clean, everything is order is in order. Um, the damper is adjustable up here. You basically take a little pin that they sent you and move the uh, the um, little shaft uh, from side to side. And there are about 21 clicks. I keep the rear pretty soft um, at about seven or eight. Um, then we move to the other uh, springs. The springs are mounted on uh, ground control weight checks. Uh, that's basically an easily adjustable perch that's also that also articulates as the other uh, that the car is moving. Um, uh, springs in the rear are 800. I went through um, 700 and 900, and then finally decided that the other uh, 800s feel best for what I do. Uh, to adjust the other uh, height on the weight jack, the car can be actually on the ground, there's no need to lift it. You basically stick in a um, socket from the bottom, connect to the, um, put it on the other uh, knob here, uh, and just start twisting, and the car goes up or down. That's as easy as that. Uh, what else is in the back? Uh, stainless steel brake lines. So that's just a safety item. Um, I'm using Castrol SRF, uh, which has a very high boiling point just to have, just for the peace of mind, even though it's uh, pretty expensive. I'm running track beds right now, which actually are kind of loose in the calipers. So when you uh, change direction, they clunk and people are sometimes freaked out by that. And of course they are very, very noisy. Um, stud conversion. I have 90 millimeter studs, so I can use different spacers because I have a bunch of different wheel setups. So, um, and I have a stack of spacers, <laughs> pretty much any size, just to uh, fit the wheels uh, properly. So, I think that about covers the other uh, back of the car. We can move to the other uh, inside, which uh, mostly has cosmetic stuff. So that little $12 mod, the 
silver trim around here that Tommy suggested. Uh, I have Turner pedals which are grippy on the, uh, the clutch and the brake but nice and smooth on the accelerator. I have the, uh, the V2 steering wheel which for the track is really really nice uh, because it has this little dimple for your thumb to, uh, to hold it. So then we have the, uh, the cosmetic um, boot and carbon fiber handbrake and the, uh, the shifter that's mostly cosmetic but it also nice. it's also nice and beefy and um, feels pretty good when, when it's time to shift. Um, I do have a fire extinguisher and I advertise it on the outside of my car because if there's a fire you should grab it and use it. It's a, a Halotron um, fire extinguisher so it does not corrode uh, the electronics in the car. That's just a little insurance item. What else is in here? I think that might be it inside. So let's move back to the uh, front of the car. So I did remove uh, brake pad sensors. Since I look at my brake pads all the time when I swap my wheels, I really don't need this thing going off and then I need to worry about replacing it and so on and so forth. So it's just uh, tied off, uh, not used, will never trigger the warning. Okay, so ground control camber plates. They are getting a little bit noisy, so I'm thinking about going with the four lock ones. Uh, but basically they are in the other uh, race position. My camber is pretty aggressive at about minus three and a half, minus four. And this is the other uh, knob to adjust the other uh, damper. Um, so I right now I have 275s in the front, but on the track I run 295 square. So you can see how the other uh, tire sticks out about um, 10 millimeters more with the 295s. So that's why the other uh, gigantic mud flap in the front uh, to protect the other uh, wheel arches in the back. And that does work. Um, okay, the car does have an upgraded crank, crank hub. Uh, it's the carbon one. And another fairly common, um, I mean, these cars are very solid. But one of the issues that you hear about is that the, uh, the charge cooler starts leaking. So I replaced it with the other uh, Garrett uh, charge cooler. I have an engine cover that I painted because I got a second one. So wanted to try how it works and it worked out well. Uh, then in the front I have the CSF heat exchanger. And the only reason I got it is because, well, the labor was free because the front was all off for the other crank up fix. And uh, it has a nice rock cover in the front. So it's pretty protected, so it should last a very long time. Here's the other strap in the front. Um, and that might actually cover it. Um, making sure I didn't miss anything. Uh, when you adjust the other camber angle, uh, it does affect the toe of the car. So you need to keep in mind that um, your alignment will change. Uh, there are ways of addressing that with different suspension parts, but um, uh, I keep it, I use the car mostly for autocross, so it's pretty much sitting in the same um, camber all the time. I do have um, sway bar links uh, by SPL because the car sits about an inch lower, I think, from stock, maybe a little bit more. Um, so, um, just so the other, the load is better on the other sway bar. And uh, the front is using 600 pound springs. I had 500s, but the car was bottoming out quickly. And eventually I ended up raising the other car three times and settling on the other 600 pound spring rate. Ah, one more thing. I have a full line oil cooler protector, which is a stainless steel piece of metal protecting the oil cooler. 
Um, I did this only because if I hit a cone and it hits the oil cooler just right underneath, uh, it might actually puncture the other oil cooler. So the way it is now, it's pretty protected. It does sit low, so from time to time, once every few months, if I hit a dip on the road just right, it actually uh, hits the road. But it's been pretty strong. It's, uh, it's all looking good down there. So uh, that's it. Those are the mods. I'm on Apex SM10 wheels right now. 10 inch rim in the front, uh, 11 inch in the... Uh, well, right now it's also the same square setup in the other uh, back. Uh, but I do have 11 inch uh, rims as well. So, uh, yep, that covers it. Thank you.